I'm not really an EA hater, or even an NHL hater. I really like the games and I've enjoyed past iterations of the game. But there's just something about NHL 23 that just rubs me the wrong way. I just feel like EA is openly mocking their fan base. I'm somebody who grew up playing hockey and therefore obviously playing the NHL video games. The games back in the day were so fun. I vividly remember NHL 06 and even NHL 04, which, by the community, is still regarded as one of the best NHL games of all time. Back then they had so many game modes, and they were fun game modes at that. And even Play Now and Season Mode were very fun. They were bare bones, but for the consoles we had, like PSP, PS2, even PS1 if you want to go back that far, and the Xboxes, it was awesome. And as somebody who's bought the game every year since NHL 06, this year I think I'm actually skipping on buying. Like, I'm not excited to play this game at all, and if you are, please let me know why. I felt so compelled to make this video because I just think enough is enough. Every year the joke is that it's the same game and sometimes they actually make useful changes and I'll be the first to admit that. But this year's editions actually feel like they're mocking us. I remember when the first couple trailers came out, the newest editions being, oh, uh, you can actually make passes now and oh, look at these new hut cards. But it's like, you should have been able to make passes last year. Fixing the passing is not a new feature and something that warrants getting my $100. So enough with the open-ended ranting, let's go through everything they released piece by piece and really break it down. Everyone was so hyped for this because this is the first time we're seeing anything from this game and they teased the first person in the first couple seconds for literally no reason. Zegra scores on a backhand in the trailer that goes right through Quick's glove showcasing a glitch in the first few seconds of the trailer, which we're off to a great start. It also introduces last chance puck movements or whatever long, boring, stupid name they gave it, which I've seen maybe one time throughout the entire beta and 10 hour trial. It showcases hats they added back into the game for hat tricks, which I'm very confused as to why that was ever removed or couldn't look better anyway with the technology that's always evolving. I've also noticed, and you'll see it's a theme later on in the video, that EA likes to do this thing where they take features we had 5, 10, 15 years ago that they removed since then, add it back into the game, and then market it as a brand new, revolutionary, groundbreaking feature. And might I add that the women being featured in this game and added to HUT is pretty sick, and if you don't think so, you're a loser. There's no argument against it. It's awesome for the game. In the trailer, they also showcased cross-platform matchmaking, which again is wordplay because it's later described to be the exact thing you are afraid of. You can only play against others on a different console, you can't play with them, and you can't play with those on PS4 or Xbox One if you're on the PS5 or Series X. So in the trailer, they make it look like you can play with whoever you want. You know, we're making the player base that much bigger, but in reality, even if I had a friend who was on Xbox, I can't play with him. I can only play against his team. How does that help me out at all? How does that even increase the player base at all? You still have to match a team. I actually don't know how they could make it this complicated. Like it has to be easier than this. If you wanted, you could play Fortnite with somebody who's on PC while you're on a Samsung fridge and you guys can't make crossplay work. Moving on further down the trailer. Oh my God, they added the Zegris flip pass. I can't wait to see this exactly zero times, just like the Michigan last year. And I bet everyone forgets how to do it anyway. Listen, EA, nobody asked for these moves at all. I know it's cool because the NHL is going this way with more skilled moves, but nobody asked for it. Everybody has almost the same wish list every year that you don't address. And if you spend too much time on these dumb moves that we never see, can't pull off, and doesn't add to other fun game modes or features, stop adding the moves. Stop spending time on this. Nobody asked for this. The next thing we got from EA this summer was the official gameplay trailer. Again, the desperation animations are cool, but they never work and I, I've never seen them. I've seen them maybe one time, like I said, in the beta and the 10 hour trial combined. The new strategies are cool, but they're glitched and nobody can really use them yet. They gave AI goalies animations that only users had access to in years prior. Do I really have to dive into why that sentence makes literally no sense? Why wouldn't you just activate that years ago? Also, does anyone notice that goalies suck this year? Like every game is nine to eight and then they'll just make really huge saves out of nowhere in really inconvenient times. I, I don't understand. But guys, they added players pointing to other players who are open. So then when I make a pass to the other player and their stick is in the air, the puck will just go flying right past them. Players also point to say that they're going off now, which is like, which is cool. But I would put that under presentation more than gameplay because I don't control that and it really doesn't change the flow of the game, really. Next, we get the presentation deep dive. Now this is EA's bread and butter. They really wanted to showcase what they could do with the next gen consoles, or I guess the current gen consoles now. 
and this was one of the main selling points for the game this year. The ice looks cool and the graphics look amazing. And I mean, I might be nitpicking, but we're also on PS5, so it probably should anyway. I spent a lot of time talking about the new Stanley Cup celebration, which is new. And yeah, they did make some changes, but they didn't add much, man. It's it's pretty bare bones. If those of you watching this never played the game, or maybe you're too young to remember, in NHL 2K10, you could skate around with the cup after you won it in season mode, and you could pass it around for an unlimited amount of time. You could just keep going. And that game came out 13 years ago. The confetti they added also glitches right through the ice, which is awesome. They added the ability to pass the puck to whoever you want to after, but it only lasts, I think, two or three players. So honestly, it's pretty bare bones and you should feel cheated if you bought this. They added a plethora of things being thrown in the ice that you can replace from alien plushies to roses to teddy bears, all this good stuff, hats. But I mean, we've had hat tricks in the games for years. They just kind of changed the animation. They changed what you could throw on the ice. It's it's a pretty, you know, interesting feature, but it's not something that, you know, wow, take my money. This is groundbreaking. The crowd noise added is cool and finally adds to the atmosphere. I'll give them that. It's actually really good. The new win animations are really cool. I'll give them that as well. But again, we've had the same win animation since like NHL 16. So it's about damn time, man. And the one thing that I saw when people were watching this trailer for the presentation deep dive is they were so excited about the pre-game presentation. And we've come to realize just after release now on the 10 hour trial yesterday, and it's all over Reddit that only six teams have it and it only lasts seven seconds. That's right, the new pre-game presentation and the, the anthems, all that good stuff that they said was brand new to the game, groundbreaking, is only active for six teams and it's seven seconds. They're also completely random. There's no slider to select if you get the full presentation or not, or even if you're in season mode. It might happen, it might not. To me, that's complete false advertisement. We always joke that it's the same game year after year and all that funny stuff, but like EA should absolutely have to answer to this presentation thing alone. The next thing was the game mode deep dive. Before we get into it, they didn't mention anything about be a pro. That is ridiculous. Look at how successful NBA 2K's career mode is. Go watch the videos, it's insane. Franchise mode is now completely customizable, which is cool, and you can adjust the little things and, and really make it your own. You can play in different eras if you really wanted to, adjusting the settings. And it's cool, but most of these things have been in NHL 04 rebuilt for years, and that's free. I mentioned before, but World of Shell now has cross-platform matchmaking, which is not at all what we thought it was going to be. And I don't know if anyone's ever addressed this, but I've never played another game where my online progression with my character and all the unlockables are completely random with a system that is flawed and doesn't work. There's no level that you're really striving for so you can lock a certain stick or certain skates that you want. It's completely random. You, you could play 500 games and you might not get the stick or the skates or whatever piece of equipment that you want. And again, Nobody asked for hockey bags. It's it's such a flawed system. The new world of Shell or you know EA Sports Hockey League, which is what we actually call it. I have no idea where Eshel came from. I've never heard anybody say that before. Yeah, the new strategies there are uh, cool, but it, it it does nothing really if it doesn't show up visually on the ice for players. Like if we already know where to go and what to do, then why are you even adding the setting? The new emotes and stuff are cool, but like this isn't Fortnite and stop trying to make it like Fortnite, you know what I mean? They also changed the World of Chell or EA Sports Hockey League playoffs a few years ago to this new weird format where you play outside that literally nobody asked for and everybody wants gone and reverted to the old one because the old one was just so much better. I have no idea what this new format is and why they continue to use it. And they also added more class spots, which is um, cool, man, cool. Versus is still pretty much the same besides being able to save your lines and strategies, which is actually pretty cool. But if you look at Reddit over the last few days since launch, uh, most people can't even get in a game. So that's awesome too. The last thing they covered was the hut deep dive and I'm not even gonna cover hut. Personally, I don't play hut, so I can't speak onto it. I think it's boring. I don't think it's fun, a fun game mode. Again, I'm speaking for myself. And I think if you play Hut and you spend money in Hut, you're a little bit a part of the problem because it's their huge money maker. Like, I don't think they make money off of game sales alone. Their, their big thing is Hut. So I've never really played Hut. I just, I, personally, again, I'm not speaking for anyone else, but I just think it's boring and uh, it's not a fun game mode. And I think the focus that they put into Hut and the microtransactions have really led the game down this dark path that it's been on for the last like 10, 11 years. And that's pretty much it, man. Uh, I just want a fun hockey game. I do not like hating on this franchise and this game. Like I actually really enjoyed NHL 22 and NHL 20 for that matter. I loved NHL 14 just like 
anyone else and the older games like NHL 04 and 06 were so much fun. I just want a fun hockey game with new features each year that makes the game fun. Not new presentation that barely shows up and was false advertisement. Not new flip passes that you probably can't even pull off. I just want to have fun with my friends. Thank you very much for watching this video. I think the NHL gaming community is so passionate and we definitely deserve better. We need change.